first time in 63 years, the British Open has moved from English soil to a new country and venue. The Principality and its capital, Cardiff, will stage the 1995 Leaks British Open. The venue for the first event in this year's high-tech PSA Super Series is the impressive Cardiff International Arena. The ideal setting for the world's most prestigious squash tournament in a city with a rich sporting and cultural heritage. Pakistan have dominated the men's event for the last 15 years. The last British man to reach the final was Scotland's Mike Oddie back in 1964. Though Jonah Barrington won three titles, many forget that he represented Ireland. Top contenders for this year unusually include a number of Britons, led by the world number two, Peter Marshall, the highest ranked Briton in almost 25 years. A strong challenge is once again expected from top Australians Brett Martin and Rodney Isles, but many believe it will take a superhuman effort to wrest the title from four times champion Jan Chakar. The British Open is one of only three events worldwide that both men and women share centre stage. Michelle Martin is dominating the women's game, losing only once in 1994. And though a strong British challenge is expected, Michelle will be the odds-on favourite to retain her title. As the British Open has joined the expanding and select number of international events that make up the PSA high-tech super series, the men have dropped the traditional nine-point scoring method in favor of the more exciting point of rally American scoring system. The winner being the first of 15 points unless tied at 14 all. Then, the receiver can either set three to 17 points or set one, sudden death. To encourage the players to go for their shots, the tin will be lowered from 19 inches to 17. It may not sound a lot, but in a game where precision is everything, those two inches make quite a difference. <laughs> the first shock of the tournament came in the first round. World number five, Peter Nickel, beaten 3-1 by the flying Frenchman, Julien Bonnetat, who had to come through the qualifying rounds. The Scot, having lost the first game, seemed to lack his usual fluidity and confidence. Bonnetat, ranked 27, seized the initiative and thoroughly deserved his victory. The Egyptian Amir Wagi, who also had to come through the qualifying rounds, beat the number 15 seed Jason Nicole from England. The score again, three games to one. 14, 13, game four. The second round match between Brett Martin, the world number four, and Colchester's Del Harris, ranked at number eight, lived up to all the expectations. Both men playing open squash and both doing some amazing retrieving. Harris won the first 15-14 after calling set one. The second game was close all along, but the Australian finally took it 15-13. <laughs> Having won the third 15-9, Martin called set one for match ball. But it was Harris who took the point to even the match at two all. The deciding game saw Martin move to a six-love lead and Harris never recovered. After 76 minutes of sheer effort, the winning point was an anti-climax. A stroke awarded against the Englishman, giving Martin the fifth, 15-9. Stroke to Martin. Stroke to Martin, going to match. Seventh seed Simon Park saw the lights go out on his title aspirations quite literally. Trailing by two games to love against Phil Whitlock, the game was halted when a strip of lights above the court view. After trying to play on and losing the third game, Whitlock asked for the lights to be fixed. This was not immediately possible. 
So, after much confusion and discussion, the match and spectators moved over to court one. Whitlock took the match 3-1, but it had been quite an eventful afternoon. I mean, the lights going out in the, you know, in the, was it the fourth game, uh, was, was really disconcerting. But, um, you know, we moved courts, and that was the decision of the tournament director, so just had to get on with it and do my best. Disappointment for Chris Walker, the world number six from Colchester, going down by three games to love to Anthony Hill. The Australian, seeded at 11, hit the headlines last year after an unsavoury incident on court with Mir Zaman Gul. But this year, it's been a different story. I am uh, pretty pleased to get through that one. Uh, lost to Chris earlier on in the season uh, in a pennant match. And uh, I was hoping to uh, get him back here. Um, and, I, you know, it was a tough match. I played well. And, you know, Chris, I don't think was... Uh, it wasn't on the ball tonight as what he usually is. But, uh, you know, I was just happy to get through with a three-love win. Peter Marshall stayed on course with a 3-1 win against fellow English international Stephen Meads. His double-fisted precision saw him take the first two games, but Meads fought gallantly to win the third before Marshall gathered himself to win the fourth 15-4. Marshall through to the semi-final. Yeah, I've um, won the last two matches 3-1. I haven't, don't think I've hit quite top form yet, but um, I think I'll be playing well tonight. Devon's Phil Whitlock pushed Brett Martin hard in their quarter-final. They managed to show that the senior players could move just as nimbly as the youngsters. With a combined age of 65, it was 32-year-old Martin who held the upper hand, winning 3-1. Two hard matches in two days for the Australian. Yeah, I prefer not to have those tough get, uh, games together, but um, I suppose it toughens you up for later in the tournament. That's the way you got to look at it, but probably slow you down a little bit too. Julien Bonnetat's fine tournament was ended by Rodney Isle. The Australian world number three looked in top form as he put recent bad results behind him. Bonnetat, a breath of fresh air, has the consolation of knowing that he will move up the ranking list. Isle's the winner, three games to one. Julian's in excellent form at the moment. He's, uh, he's had some great wins over Peter Nicol, the world number five, uh, Zarek Jan Khan, the next round. Um, you know, I've been beaten by Julian before, so I didn't take him lolly at all. The fourth quarterfinal was not the foregone conclusion everybody predicted. Defending champion Jan Khan cruised through the first game, but Anthony Hill showed guts and character to take the next game. Jan looked rattled, and a few stern words were exchanged in the Pakistani's corner. That seemed to galvanize Khan. He regained his poise and finally triumphed by three games to one, but a tough match for the world champion. Well, uh, I will just say I'm playing badly in the second game, and uh, really I will just say uh, I'm not happy about my match today. And uh, but I will just say I'm playing uh, very good in beginning first round and second round, and uh, and that's good. I lost uh, second game here because uh, that uh, make me uh, strong for tomorrow. <laughs> semi-final of the 1995 British Open sees Peter Marshall, the world number two, take on Brett Martin, the Australian ranked fourth. But what makes Marshall tick? Well, I started when I was seven because my father owned a squash club. And because I was so small and weak, I uh, played double-handed and carried that ever since. There have been quite a lot of coaches that uh, have thought I wouldn't get any better. Uh, for instance, once I was in the 16s, I said, when you get into the 19s, the game will be too quick and you'll have to change and then again into the senior game. But uh, I kept on improving so I thought, well, why change? And uh, that style of play has got me to the world number two, so I don't think it's done me too much harm. The pressure comes from me, really. I want to do as well as possible and uh, I don't really tend to think about what other people want me to do. So I'm, I'm just looking forward to the week, really. It's great that uh, the tournament's now in Cardiff. Hopefully I'll get a lot of support as the week goes on and uh, I'm just hoping to get to the final and maybe have a good crack at Jancha then. I lost to Jancha in six Super Series finals last year and I lost to him three weeks ago in Portugal. So um, obviously I've been on the receiving end quite a few times but hopefully this will be different. It'll be in front of my home crowd and it's about the biggest storm of the year. So hopefully all those things put together and my experience of playing in the past just might make the difference. tournaments and 
when I'm training, I just like to uh, go out for food, go to the cinema. Uh, I tend to read quite a lot, as you've got quite a lot of time on tour. So um, just to try to do something completely away from squash as possible. And, and in the summer, when I've got time, I sometimes play a bit of golf. So uh, I just try and do just things that would take my mind off squash. Nottingham's Peter Marshall stands on the threshold of his first ever British Open final. The double-hander has responded well to the extra pressure of carrying British hopes. One three love and two three one wins have secured his place in the last four. At 32, Brett Martin may not have too many British Opens left in him, but undoubtedly the hardest hitter and most precise player on the men's circuit will be aiming to play party pooper and deny Marshall the glory. He's had three tough matches during the week. Will this play a part in the outcome of the second semi-final? Well, I'm going to try to make him run around as much as possible. Um, usually our matches are a matter of how that strategy works out. Like if he, if he ends up wearing me down, he ends up winning. And if I can move him around enough, I end up winning. So that's the way it's going to go, I think. And the result's going to deter be determined on how well I do it. Brett's a very deceptive player, very good at the front of the court. And uh, playing any loose shot to the front of the, front of the court is very difficult for him to read. He's um, got a very strong wrist. Uh, flicks the ball about at the front and uh, difficult to know where the ball's going. So I think I'm going to have to try and keep in the back corners, uh, hopefully try him out a little bit and then start playing the ball short. We haven't actually path, crossed paths um, for a long time, but um, he's been a lot more consistent over the last year than I have. He's been reaching a lot of finals. He's yet to win one, I think, but um, I'm sure I'll be out there trying to beat him tomorrow and get to the final again. Marshall got off to a dream start taking the first two games 15-7, 15-7. Commentators, former world number two Chris Robertson and Jonah Barrington. Lovely work into the front of the court with the wrist again and then the counter drop. <laughs> Peter two yards off it. Here we see another part of Brett's game quickly onto the forehand drop for the counter drop. And we can see that it's not just the power game that Brett possesses, it's the touch at the front of the court as well. Thank you. 14-5, game so ball. So game ball for Brett Martin to reduce this two games to love lead taken um, by Peter Marshall. You just wonder why Brett had, had to wait till he was two love down before he decided to pick the pace up. Hand out, 6-14. Obviously if he wins this game, game he's still gonna be under severe pressure to win the match. So that's Brett Martin for you. So Martin has climbed his way back into this British Open semi-final with some really quite spectacular squash. Martin back in the match. Can he sustain the pressure in the fourth? It's tight. Marshall 7-6 ahead. And the Crisis point, really, for Brett Martin. There's been some savage rallying Eight in the six. course of the last game and a half. Coming back from a 2 naught deficit. Brett finding his way quite brilliantly back in the third game. And then both players at their best in the fourth. Yes, Lert. You just get the feeling here that Peter's trying to hold Brett Eight here. Six hoping for another couple of mistakes because once Peter gets four or five points ahead in this fourth game I couldn't see him losing the match there's the parallel work down the walls about a foot 18 inches out Just a breather of a rally. Tough drop shot going in. Both players working it steadily. Everybody waiting for something unusual from Brett Martin. There it came. Beautiful tight ball, forcing Peter to flip the ball up. Last minute flick of the wrist there from Brett Martin. I don't know too many people that would, would be able to A, play that shot, or B, get that ball back. 
Stroke to Marshall. Stroke situation and around the middle of the court. Brett dragging the ball back into himself. Peter Marshall back out of the front and around to cover it. The automatic stroke. This is unbelievable what he was trying then. And it didn't work. 10-7. Looks like Brett's had a very, very big lap of, lapse of concentration there. That was very ambitious, even by his own standards. So Peter Marshall having to hold fast and getting the errors that he would have wanted. Right side. Here we see a, a very, very poor shot from 11, Brett. Seven. Whipped cross court. Plenty of time, really, for a player of Brett's standard. But not catching the ball well at all. Looked a tired shot too, Chris, but how about that? Here we see Brett at his brilliant best here. Standing up the front of the court, waiting for the cross-court reply and burying it away in the nick. Down. 9-11. All of a sudden he's back in this game. A couple of winning shots, a couple of mistakes from Peter. Reverse pressure, isn't it? Amazing wrist. Still in play. And the winner to the back of the court. Desperate appeal from Peter Marshall. No way that he was going to get elect there. Thought he'd won the point. And now on the receiving end and under pressure, even though he has a marginal lead at 11-10. Three quick points from Brett Martin brought him back now into contention. Peter will have desperately wanted that. Again, you see Brett here. Guessing for the volley, Twelve, guessing ten. right. But Peter was able to hit the ball straight and tight, forcing the mistake on the volley. Crucial point. Crucial tightness on the shot that he played, Chris, wasn't it? If it had been off the wall, Brett would have made mincemeat of it, like he did with that cross court win. Anticipating. 11, 12. Peter really has to try and straighten the ball up from the front of the court. Brett is guessing cross court every time, and Peter's doing him a favour by hitting it there. Yes, lad. Detroit have sustained creative gain interference. Appeal. Appeal left. No left. Appeal right. Yes, lad. Sustained. An important decision there, mainly because Brett 11, had a chance 12. to get a little breather there. I'm sure that's the reason he there so he can go for this next flurry of points feet are going tight and hard down the wall yes lad feel right yes lad sustained 11 12 so brett martin serving at 11 12 in the fourth two one down Peter Marshall in the blue. Just the sort of free point that Peter Marshall would have wanted at this stage. I suppose you have to admire Brett's ability to play those type of shots in tight situations, but it does make you wonder why he didn't try and move the ball to the front of the court and come in and volley the ball like he's done successfully the last four or five points. Well, he's given himself such a mountain to climb, Chris, hasn't he, through the lethargy of the first two, and that error brings Peter Marshall, the number two seed, to match 14, point. 11, match four. Match point for Peter Marshall. Go through to the British Open final. Lightning rally, a bit loose, but fast. Recoveries from Peter, again the wrist. Good control down the wall. No lad. No. 
Fiercely angry. I think that was a very, very good decision by the referee here. You see the drive deep from Peter. You see Brett holding it. Peter going forward initially, running into Brett, but I do believe that his momentum was too far forward and not back. He would have found it difficult to retrieve that ball. 12-14, match four. A little bit of hold. And again, the second match ball for Peter Marshall at 14-12. Good width out from Brett. Peter going into the stand. <laughs> Magnificent victory. The match coming afire in the third and fourth games. The crowd responding accordingly. Marvellous squash. So, Peter Marshall, the first Englishman to reach a British Open final for 56 years. 3-1 victor over Brett Martin. The arena in Cardiff a buzz as the second men's semi-final is about to start. Who will join Peter Marshall in the final? Jen Chikan reaches the semi-final, having dropped only one game. The defending champion cruising through the games against Kirkland and Norman before being tested by Hill. The Pakistani now gathering himself for the final push towards his fourth British Open title. World number three, Rodney Isles, the super fit boy from Brisbane, has looked back to the form that secured two Super Series titles last year. After a tight first round match with Hansi Beans, the Australian has shown his power and tactical shrewdness to beat Waggy and Bonitat. For Isles, meeting Khan holds no fears. You know, you know, it's nice to think that you've beaten him before and, uh, and hopefully he'll uh, have that in the back of his mind. You know, I'm just going to keep pressing him. Um, I think these courts here, you know, they, they adapt me uh, to my game a lot better. And, uh, and, uh, but again, you know, you've got to be really on your game and all aspects of your game. You've got to be, you know, 10 out of 10 on top of everything. Well, I lost uh, from Rodney Ailes once in the Portuguese Open, but I lead him from, I lead him 2-1 in match ball and I lost from there. But after that, I beat him four or five times, you know, and quite easily. And uh, I can't say about tomorrow, but uh, I will try my best to play a good match and, and win it, you know. It's a new day and uh, it's a British Open. You know, he's got a lot of pressure on him. Um, you know, I've never made a semi-final before in the British Open and, uh, and you, know, he's got, you know, he's sort of favourite to win. Uh, he's out to beat Jahangir Khan's record. So, you know, he's got a lot of pressure on him. So, you know, hopefully I'll just uh, play on those uh, points. We join the play in the first game. It's close with Rodney Isles 13-11 ahead. Commentary, Chris Robertson and Jonah Barrington. You can see the urgency in both players here. Lovely. Are you appealing? No, I want some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like? If I was working in the cafeteria, I'd get him some <laughs> coffee as well. I don't know what I would have necessarily called yes, that right. a sense of humour. 12-13. Here's a very tight part of the match, and when refereeing decisions aren't quite going the way you would like them, you can play in your mind. But you just forget about that and get on with it. He's really trying to attack us. Conduct an assault on Jansha. Forward position. Yes, let. The arm just went out looking for a let. The ball was tight to the 12, side wall. 13, let out. A little bit of a lost opportunity there, I think. Uh, Jansha flipped the ball up. Rodney was in a very commanding position and chose to volley it deep. Possibly a volley short. Could have got him a point. Yes, let. 12-13. You can already see Rodney's aggressive nature to the ball as well. He's not one to, to stop and ask. He look, tries to make every effort to get to the ball to show the referee that he can get there. Janisha happens to be in his way. And he'll just have to go to the back of him. That's a tight ball. Rodney trying to go for the kill. Yes, yeah. Not quite finding the nick and Jancha moving well, in for a let. Getting it. Okay. 
critical period. Rodney Arles has played ever so well to get leads in this first game. Chance is still there. Quite a bit yes, unhappy. Jack just suggesting well, the ball 30. was almost as high as the cut line. I don't think it was as high as that. I can assure the referee Janisha would have got that. And maybe that time to go and get that cup of coffee for Rodney as well. Straight to Isles. And out. 14 12. So it's game ball. Although an appeal in operation again. Firm stroke takes Rodney Isles from Brisbane to game ball. Both parties needing steely nerves at this stage. 14-12, game ball. With his own short volley. Yes, yes, Matt. 14 12, game ball. Here we see Rodney in the back, forced across court, coming in. Uh, and I think he felt there was a little bit of contact there on the way to the ball. He's appealing for a let on the lead, he'll hit on the way through. Yes, Matt. 14 12. Very game. close decision there, and I think Rodney's been a little bit lucky to get the, get the right reply. It's good volley deep. Going for pace down the wall. In front goes short. Jancha doesn't make it. First game to Rodney Isles, 15-12. The British Open and World Champion, one down. Game to Isles, 15-12, one game to love. So here again we see the back end, back end side of the court being worked. Rodney driving it deep. Forcing Janisha to float the ball. Rodney, the backhand volley. Janisha with the stretch, just clipping the tin. To give Rodney the first game. So, game ball to Janisha Khan. Take a two to one lead. Fierce match. Even fiercer third game. But the winner. Try to one. Keep thinking, keep changing yourselves. Keep thinking. Final point of the third game here. Rodney trying to flick cross court. Jennifer at full extension. Plays a lovely backhand drop in the nick. Rodney trying valiantly to pick it up. But unfortunately, just short. Khan getting his nose in front, and he's up the tempo in the fourth, leading 10 3. But Jansha now very much in charge of this match. Doesn't happen easily. What we're seeing here is possibly Rodney just getting a little three. bit more tired, struggling to get to these front balls, struggling to get the racket underneath the ball to lift it up. Consequently, he's making a few mistakes. But here we see the other exciting part of Rodney Earl's forehand volley. Cross court into the nick. Simply superb shot. Yes, Len. <laughs> Four, eleven. Again, okay, Jancha not. Not appealing, so feeling on this occasion and some communication between the two players. Janisha did very well there. Rodney played a, a drive deliberately down the middle of the court. The top players expect the ball to come wide on the cross course. Rodney played it down the middle, but Janisha was awake to that idea and volleyed it deep. Thank you. Five, eleven. And Rodney Isles 
squeezing Jankshire on the wall. He did a lot of that in the first game and for a considerable part of this match, but we haven't seen too much of it in this fourth game. He's been very lucky there, Jankshire. He's clipped that off the side of the wall. Come off the frame of his, his racket and off to the winner. That's a signal for Rodney for not What a shot. I'd love to see these Knicks going in. There would be uproar if Rodney could somehow pull this game around, take the match into a fifth game. It's a long haul from 7-12. Rodney's working physically very hard in this game. You can see his movement is... Seven. Well, he's as fast and as explosive as he can make it. I'm not quite sure if he has the necessary legs to, to win this game. Lovely drive, forced to boast, little drop goes into the neck. Lovely textbook squash here from Janisha. Lovely drive, forcing the boast. 13, from deep in the court from Rodney. Quickly on the boast for the straight drop for the winner. Straight to come. 14-7. Match and now 14-7 match point to Janisha Khan. Game of fluctuating fortune, furiously fought, and he's got it. Fourth game, 15-7, and Jang Chakan goes through to yet another final of the British Open, beating a ferocious challenge from Rodney Isles, and finally winning by three games to one. So it's Khan versus Marshall in the final. But the practice required to reach this standard is immense. Rodney Isles now takes us through his volleying routine. When a player decides to uh, volley the ball, he uh, automatically starts dictating the play. For a club players, um, getting the, uh, the ball into the corners is the hardest shot to get out. So when he starts playing the, uh, the volley at the beginning of the rally, he automatically dictates the point. Okay, I'm going to go through a few routines of practice on my, on my own, um, starting with just nice straight volleys. Uh, starting from the cut line. Always remembering to keep a nice open face. Notice how I'm getting nicely away from the ball and transferring my weight forward. This is some straight volleys again. You can move up the cord a bit lower. That's how you've got to keep a nice firm wrist. Notice the weight is transferred forward, move back. There's uh, so many different volleys you can play. You can play the straight volley nick or volley drop. Probably the most difficult volley is the um, nice and straight down the wall. This is called a figure eight routine. Because you're always going to be on the tee, looking for the volley. When I'm using the volley, I'm looking where my opponent is, so I can move him off the tee. Um, I'll either hit a, a nice straight uh, drop shot up the front, or I can hit the ball close to the, to the outline and get the ball deep. So, yeah, don't be afraid to go to the tee and, and look for the volley. Um, at the beginning, you're going to perhaps um, you're going to miss a few, but uh, in the end, it'll strengthen your game a lot more uh, if you can volley the ball and uh, get your opponent behind you. <laughs> The 1995 British Open Women's Final. A capacity crowd eagerly awaiting the All-Australian Clash. Fourth seed Liz Irving, one of the most consistent players for the past 10 years. 
world champion and defending Open champion Michelle Martin looking for a hat trick of titles. So Michelle Martin, 7 5 now. The seven has been a sticking point. Great volley and the recovery not good enough. 8 5, match ball. So that stroke gives Michelle Martin the holder first match point, which immediately she dissipates. A lot of tension now. Down. Fortunately, Liz can't capitalize. And up, eight five, match ball. She too is under strain. Second match point for Michelle Martin. Positive hitting through the ball. Both girls still in play. Down. And the error on the forehand volley. And Good up, opportunity. Five, Rash of unforced errors. Liz lives again. Can she come back? Oh, second boast. Got the volley. The width from Michelle wasn't good enough. Volley short, not good enough. Volleyed again. Tremendous work around the middle of the court from both girls. Right, zooming up again with a rally like this. Just back into play. How did she get that one? Oh, oh that's great stuff. It was appealing. No left. No yeah, after a long rally like no that, left. Liz is appealing. No but left. Liz... Stay. No left. Eight five. Match so match point number three for Michelle Martin. First angle goes in, little drop, and that'll be a stroke. Both that She's holding on. She worked that well, Lisa. Eight. Down. Ah, uh, but unfortunately, and now eight five. Her own inability point. to proceed further. Fourth match point. Frantic activity. Drop very high. A nervous Eight drop there, I think. <laughs> I don't know if it was a drop or a lob, <laughs> Jonas. <Almost laughs> went to a length, Lisa. And here it is, a left. So match point still. Good width and depth. It is just getting it out. That's a good length. Another good length from Michelle. Tight ball. <laughs> Liz in short, just got back, and the volley, short volley, just picked up, good opportunity to finish, somehow in play from Liz, and still in play, a fierce third drive, still pole position for Michelle, still holding the tee, but Liz in it, and I don't know what the first shot came from, Reaction there. it's incredible. Went short, came out, this could be it, and that is it. Great match. So Michelle Martin takes the ladies' title at the league's British Open 1995. The gladiators enter the arena. Marshall versus Carr. England versus Pakistan for the 1995 Leeds British Open title. The young Englishman having a nightmare and Jansha Khan for once looking almost awkward. In front of the, one of the very few times that Peter actually getting the ball wide across on the forehand side there and Jansha was unable to make contact there. It's always nice to get off that zero. Score line. Professional players do not like to think of the prospect of losing any type of game. 15 love, 15 love. There's a straight drive. Jancha was looking for it. It was good though. It needed to be. Lovely lob over the top. Jancha so good on recoveries. 
best retriever in the game has needed to be that again the, the skills in the front of the court so visible and the ultimate winner here again peter's effort is remarkable I'm fighting to get every ball back 10-1 but there's only so much room on the squash court and Janice have found the open spaces the back end drive Janja Khan, 10-1, now 10-2. Crowd, two ten. Here we trying see trying to force a winner from Peter from deep on the court on the forehand drop shot. Yes, lad. That's the first one I can recollect tonight. Maybe he should be playing a few more of them. Well, the crowd, Chris, certainly willing him to come into this match. That was the productive short angle that no won him three or four points Feel against left. Brett Martin, but Jansha was right. there with him when he no played it. Sustained. Hand out, 11 2. And again, we see an appeal from Peter being denied, and he really can't pull a trick tonight. Maybe he should go home and come back and start again. I think that's probably the feeling he'll yes, have, won't it? I'm sure you've had it, I've two. had it. You wish you could replay the match. You're in the changing room and you can't conceive what's happened to you. Well, that's right, Jonah. It's just unfortunate. It happens to be the, the final of the British Open and the first final that Peter's reached. 12-2. Here we see the forehand volley. Lovely touch. Peter stretching, but has happened quite often tonight, not able to get it up. So Jancha Khan at 13-2. Two points away from his fourth successive British Open title. I know Peter is renowned for his determination and his qualities to fight, but he really is Count. up against it here tonight. And here we see a bit of variation from Peter here. 313. Looking for the straight ball at the last minute, flicking across court and forcing a rare error from Janisha. And again, an example, though, of Jancha's ability to turn on a sixpence. Dr. Marshall, 4.13. It's fair to say that Peter is on a roll here, Jonah. Two points in a row. Yeah. The way he's played tonight would constitute a roll. No, no. No, no. Uh, we'd like to have seen that at the beginning of the match, Chris. Here we see some aggressive play from Peter. Still left. Half court no stepping in, sustained. powerful backhand by the short. And as you said earlier, maybe you should have been trying to do that earlier on in the match. One thing we could guarantee no. is he would fight, but that squeezed and pressure and post hitting the 14, tin five, match ball. brings Jansha Khan from Pakistan to match point. drive the openings there for the second one and the ultimate winner it's Jancha's title graced by his supporting cast third and final game 15-5 a devastating victory Jancha Many congratulations on a marvellous win. Did you envisage a slightly tougher game from Peter Marshall? Well, I played with Peter Marshall two weeks ago in the Portuguese Open, you know, but uh, I will just say about that final, you know, I will, I don't know that final will be pretty easy, you know, and uh, I will just say, you know, I'm playing fantastic, you know, and, uh, and I'm very happy about my performance today. You say you play a long game, but you produced everything that squash has to offer out there tonight. Well, uh, I'm just trying to play uh, early as possible, and uh, I will just say, you know, I'm Ladies playing fantastic. Please, I have a drop, and I take all ball, ball from the front, you know. And uh, when I win the first game, you know, Ladies that I know uh, I have a chance to play the seat. drops, you know. And I will just say, you know, I'm playing fantastic drop today. Are you playing as well as you've ever played? Well, I'm playing with him many, many times, but uh, I will just say, you know, this, this final, particularly, you know, I'm playing very good against him.
Jancha Khan getting the 1995 high-tech PSA Super Series off to a great start. The next event will be in New York, the Tournament of Champions in June. With other events in Hong Kong, Malaysia and Cyprus, the competition for Super Series points will be fierce. The top eight players going through to the Super Series final.